Well, it's hard to believe that I, uh, just a few days ago, I was in Iraq on the uh, northern, western side of Mosul. Have any of you been keeping up with the battle going into Mosul <clears throat> to free? That's uh, a city. Uh, how many people are in Gardenia here? What, what, what's the population of y'all's town? Anybody? Wow. Okay, maybe y'all aren't from Gardenia. All right. Is that the city we're in? Uh, okay. <laughs> what do you do? Bust them all in from <laughs> Santa Barbara? Come on down. San Diego. Good. I understand. It was good preaching. I would too. Uh, but it basically is a city of about 1.5 million people. And three years ago, an um, extremist group called ISIS invaded that town. It would, be, it would really be like they come into this city and absolutely control it. Kill police officers, shoot anybody that resists. Come into your home, find out who you are. For those of you that resisted, they would kill you as a husband. Uh, they would take and enslave your children or your wife. And the most extreme atrocities that I won't even begin to say. And then on top of it, they actually will take your children's schools and put into the curriculum theirs to train, raise, and really brainwash the next generation for their bidding. Um, people think ISIS or Daesh, as they call them there, uh, are just terrorists that are running around. They're a very well-organized, well-funded intentional group that's probably more evil than anything we've seen of recent. Um, this is a booklet uh, for math that they actually make, produce, and have the kids use as their curriculum. On one of the pages, it shows a machine gun posted with targets to help learn math. There were two brothers that were, uh, when the village was overtaken, their parents were killed, and they were brought into ISIS's fold, and um, they were, I, I think they were probably 10 or 11 at the time. For three years underneath that evil, at the end of three years, these boys were convinced that becoming suicide bombers were the best thing they could do. And I actually saw the video where they're laughing they're denouncing their original tribe of Yazidi and saying that Islam, extreme Islam is the only way. And them getting into a V-bed, a vehicle, you know, an improvised vehicle with explosives to go to their target. Teenagers, young teenagers, two brothers, different vehicles. ISIS from a drone filmed them hitting their targets and killing themselves and killing other people. Why did I tell you this? It's to say that evil is real and it is often manifested in ways beyond what you would even imagine. And uh, Satan has hated the Middle East, I think primarily because Jesus was born there. We forget Jesus was from the Middle East, right? And... Uh, Think about Mosul, this town that's in the news with all the fighting of the Peshmerga or the Iraqi army trying to free captives in this huge city of atrocities that ISIS has taken over. They, uh... Did you know Mosul is modern-day Nineveh? Mosul is where, was it Moses? Jonah. That's for y'all back there. I don't even know what he's talking about. No. <laughs> uh, it modern. That, that's where Jonah went. That's where Jonah went and gave the very short message, some about repenting, and the, you know, and then it was the largest revival, right? where, I mean, 
they turned, repented from their evil ways. Remember, the Ninevites were people that would skin people alive. And then, you know, Jonah got all depressed, and he's the one that didn't even want to go in the first place. Y'all remember that part? He'd rather get in the belly of a well. I say rather because he stayed in there three days. Three days? I think within 10 minutes of me getting ate up by a fish, I'd be like, all right, Lord, what you want me to do again? Talk about a hard head. Three days he's in there. And uh, God will use whatever circumstance it takes to get his will done, right? So it took him getting Jonah bleach from the gastric juices in his belly's well, white, all, you know, stuff hanging off of him. He's probably sick of sushi by the end of that. <clears throat> and then, you know, he gets thrown up and then he walks to Nineveh like that. God said, repent. <laughs> People were like, whatever you say, creature. <laughs> huh. So, uh, God's still on the move in the Middle East. In the midst of the worst evil, God's spirit is moving. You'll never hear about it from the media. I mean, how can you trust the media anyway these days, you know? i tell you how you find out what's really going on. Go to our Facebook page. Get on our email list. We give current up-to-date. I mean, I... Um, so I was embedded with the Iraqi army and the Hassan Shabi, which is the Iranian-backed militia group that have been called to shoot American soldiers on site. So me and one other Christian American were embedded with them. No American soldiers anywhere. It's just us. <laughs> They're like, who are y'all? Just Christians? Love the Lord, here to help women and children that are being held captive by ISIS. Why are you wearing a grenade? Oh, because we don't want to get killed. <laughs> people, people see pictures of us on Facebook and go, why are you wearing body armor and carrying an AK? I go, because I want to fulfill my ministry. I... I'm just, and don't worry, I have Christians that are like, what kind of missionary work is that? I'm all, I'm sorry, do you lock your door at night? I mean, I'm just wondering. Trust me, when you take a village and you see people freed, women and children, and then that night you're sleeping in the same small room ISIS fighters were, the night before, Amen. you pray a lot, and you're thankful to God that he still sets captives free, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And we're talking Christians. We're talking Christians. I hate death and dying, but I hate children being taken advantage of by evil. And that is directly from evil. But yeah, you should see some of my Facebook posts. I was actually trying to do one live during a battle. Hey, we're here. I'm doing a selfie. There's bad guys over there. You hear boom, 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 smoke. I'm all, <laughs> they're right over there. Uh, can y'all pray? People are like, this guy's crazy. Crazy with a K. If you can do it better, I invite you. For the critics, I just say, hey, I'm not... I ain't even saying I'm doing it right. I maybe move the needle a little bit, but you come on. Show me how you're going to do it. Come on. Uh, got a picture of me riding a donkey. AK across my. <laughs> Funding was low on, you know, transportation. <laughs> our, our armored vehicle there that we had to get has been hit 17 times. And when I was asking for money to, to buy a vehicle, some Christians were like, why don't you just believe and have faith? 
I do. I believe and have faith that God's going to provide a big, thick, armored vehicle for us. <laughs> but come on over and show me your faith. Um, we laugh, but it's not all fun. When people are being tortured and murdered, when Christians are being crucified, when children are being beheaded, and children, Christian children, being beheaded because they won't renounce their faith in Christ. I'm telling you firsthand. So, I wonder when children pray because they're locked up or they're being trafficked or they see their dad being killed when they pray to God for help. I just wonder if we're, if, if we may be the ones who God would use to be an answer to their prayers. Christians in America who by and large are well fed, well housed, even in our poverty, it's so much more than what they have. So is God doing great things? Yes, he is. Amen. He's doing great things. Um, most of the time, though, if we're honest, we as Christians struggle and don't want to do God's will because we're afraid. Or we're believing lies. And that's the title of today's message. What lies are you believing? If you would, turn to first Wikipedia, nine... Uh, <laughs> Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Now, I, I, I am not in any stretch going to try to be some great expositor teacher because you have one. Exhibit A, you have one of the best Bible teachers that you could, you know, and, and, the, and the legacy that you'll have. Are you kidding me? Amazing. You don't know how many times... Uh, your former pastor who changed his address would minister to me on the radio. Do you know you can, you can listen to preachers anywhere around the world on this? I mean, I've been anywhere I can catch a signal. Feed me, please. And I'm grateful for the body of Christ here. Uh, I, I've longed for the day where I could come say thank y'all uh, for ministering to me uh, in ways that y'all would never know. But Christians, I think, can be scared or believe lies of the enemy. You know, it's, uh, it's John 8, where it speaks about the devil is the father of what? Lies. It says the truth's not even in him. It's lies. So my question to you is, what lies are you believing that keep you from experiencing God's perfect will from being accomplished in your life, or for some of you, even coming to know Christ personally? Because some of you here today are watching, you know in your heart you don't know Christ personally. You know that you don't have a good personal relationship with him. A lot of times it's just because of lies that you've believed. And I'm here to dispel a couple of lies. You want to do that this morning? Amen. Okay, so, you know, um, Satan is a bully. I believe that all my heart. I mean, do y'all believe in a literal Satan, a little devil? I mean, not one with horns and pitchfork and a little tail. I'm talking one that's strategic and uh, crafty and knows humanity and actually assigns, I believe, demons to a lot of Christians to follow you, to stalk you, to study you, to put darts into your mind that keep you off track. Or Does, does that make sense? Okay. All right. Well, um, I'm seeing it. And the only way you can combine lies is with what? Truth. Truth. That's why you want to be in the Word of God. That's why you want to have your mind renewed, right? Because if he's the father of lies, then he's going to be whispering lies to you. Uh, and sometimes whispers are louder than screams when they're, when they're like this. It'll wear you down. And the, the, believe me, the devil is a bully. Demons are bullies. That's all. I've dealt with plenty of them over the years. I mean... Plenty. 
seeing the manifestation, manifestation of demonic attacks or oppression on people or even weirder than that. That's rare, but the, and the enemy just likes attention. I'm like, shut up. Uh, this church is pretty good. Most of the time when I talk about the devil and demons, everybody gets real quiet. <laughs> I mean, some churches it's just like, Ding. it's like, don't say his name loud. <laughs> he might hear. <laughs> hey, you know the best way to deal with bullies? Punch them right in the mouth. Just boom. Not so loud now. And you know, spiritually, God's given us that authority. And that's the word that boils down to authority. Not just knowledge, but authority. Do you understand? Authority. That what you know or have will work every time against the enemy if you apply it. So, um, and remember, the battle's real. That's why we need it. So uh, here, here is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. ESV, it says, ooh, listen to that. <laughs> Boy, you know how many churches I never hear that in? Ah. Man, that's just like, I didn't record that. Play it. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. We destroy arguments. And every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Amen. That is our formula right there, my friends, to take every thought captive. That's how you know if you're being lied to. In that moment where you get a thought, you have to say, <clears throat> is that me? Or is that God? Or is that the devil? Because it's going to be one of those three. Unless you have personality disorder. And then it could be, you know, you get up to 10 and is that, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, and I ain't making fun of mental illness, trust me, if you knew, um, you'd just be saying amen. So take every thought captive. It's something that you actually have to do. Just like in martial arts or, or you know, self-defense, or be, you know, awareness is key. I tell people, you know, you got to be aware. You got to, you know, you got to assess. When you can, you got to avoid. But then when there ain't no other choice, you got to engage. You got to engage hard. And, and spiritually speaking, I think that's true. Okay? Ladies, single ladies, where y'all at? Where y'all at? What's up? What's up, girl? <laughs> so let me talk to y'all. Say, <laughs> Satan's always been after y'all from the beginning. He don't like females. He don't like females at all. You know why? I don't know. No. <laughs> One, it was y'all kind that brought Jesus to the earth. Y'all were the vehicle. Do you ever stop and think about that? He's like, mm. and he, he rails against you single gals. You know, he, he instills fear in you, right? You know, fear about relationships, am I right? Well, you got to get you a man. I need a man. That's right, I need a man. <laughs> Ooh, nobody wants you. Oh, nobody wants me. I'll make them want me. <laughs> Girl, you're getting old. You ain't never going to have no kids. <sighs> trust me. You can trust God for a man. All right? Your ovaries ain't going to dry up. God, <laughs> I'm just speaking truth that the devil whispers to you. Be like, oh. Hey, listen. God actually loves you so much, he's got your best interest in mind and all of it. All of it. And you can trust him. You have to. Because if you start listening to the lies of the enemy, that will drive you to do 
and be things and that God has never intended you to do and be. It will cause you to compromise what you know is right. Oh, just, just you know, man, if I just, if I can, you know, show him and please, and he said he loved me. I know I ain't supposed to like, you know, but if I do, then can I just be frank with y'all ladies? If sex is what it took to get and keep great men, prostitutes would be the most sought after women in the world. <laughs> is that too hard to preach on right there? Sorry, my dad was a drug dealer and a pimp. My mom was married six times. I went to 14 schools, lived in 17 houses. I saw the effects of people living according to the lies of the enemy. And I saw evil up and close and personal as a kid. I was abused physically, sexually. As a child, I was left in a cooler at five years old to die. I've been electrocuted. I've been dunked in a tub till I passed out, only to have my stepfather breathing into my mouth to resuscitate me after he had held me dunked in a tub. And when I came to on that cold bathroom floor, the first words I heard was him looking down at me saying, boy, don't you ever forget, I'm the one that gives you life. Those are lies that I call lies based in reality. And those often are the hardest ones to get over. And I'm telling you, the word of God can wash your mind and the truth can wipe those lies out. Amen. Amen. They totally can. <clears throat> Do you know God may be waiting just to show off in your life? You, if you're willing to trust him, surrender everything to him, follow him, and aggressively stand against the works of darkness. But you have to stop believing the lies. Huh. Do you know Jesus is alive and well? Amen. I mean, I talk about the devil, but it's only because <laughs> knowing the truth about Jesus. Okay, I'm going to just tell you all this. Just in Iraq, just off the donkey, uh, you know, pinking with an AK, we'd put a red dot just in case the enemy came to, you know, ah, here they come. And I'm not going to shoot her. I'm like this, ah. Oh, stop, stop. <clears throat> but right then out of nowhere, a car, a car pulls up behind us on its dirt road. Boom, boom. And believe me, when cars start moving over there, everybody's like, mm, it's bounding. And we're going, what? And all of a sudden, it's a guy, two guys and a lady in the back. She's got a burka on. The guy gets out, talks to my interpreter. My interpreter, we're in the middle of nowhere. Y'all with me? My interpreter goes, the lady has psychological problems and they need help. Oh. <laughs> what? I'm sitting there thinking, uh, I'm called a trauma specialist, just finished a film called Triggered on PTSD, hope and healing for all who suffer from trauma, and a car bounces our way in the middle of nowhere, where I can see ISIS, you know, in the next village across a field, and she needs help. I was like, we can do this. I walk over, howdy, and I'm really nervous because I'm like, and bless her heart, she had been burned. And I'm looking at the husband thinking, ooh, you... We want exact justice on you right now. And all of a sudden, we, this guy is begging for help for his wife. Loves her. A mommy of two small kids, suffering. And he's saying, her mind, I don't know what's wrong with her. I do a quick assessment, background, case of, you know, trauma. Yes, she'd been affected by ISIS when they invaded, they fled. All the stresses of that. But she kept talking about crazy things. And believe me, I understand crazy. I've been on Debaco, Debakine, Prozac, Zoloft, Lithium, Abuse Bar. Thank you. <laughs> and that wasn't even my personal, you know, pharmaceutical uh, approaches. I mean, I started doing drugs in the sixth grade. Not because I wanted to be cool, it's because I didn't want to feel. I don't want to remember. 
And I looked at her and I said, do y'all believe in demons? They're two Muslims in a car. And they go, yeah. So you believe in evil? Yeah. The Muslim faith believes in actual, like we do, demonic forces. I said, do you mind if I command a demon, if there's one that's been assigned to you to tell us exactly what, you're, what he's doing? They're like, it can't get any worse. <laughs> I mean, she burned her face. I go, I'm going to pray. And um, I pray, and I, I command this demon. If there is a demon, you, you, in, in the name of Jesus, you must reveal your strategies against this woman right now. And all of a sudden, she goes, I said, what are you hearing? She goes, it's the three things I always hear. What are they? Cut myself burn myself, and drink poison to die. I said, that's evil. I said, do you want that demon destroyed, never to bother you again? Yes. In the name of Jesus, I command you, foul spirit, to go directly to the footstool of Jesus Christ, receive perfect judgment from the King of kings and Lord of lords, never return to this woman or any other human again. You've been found out, and now you're gone. In the name of Jesus. Do you know what she said? She goes, is Jesus alive? I said, yes, he's alive, and he loves you, and he's going to free you. Boom. She got free just like that. <laughs> Amazing what God did. And then I, I'll never forget, and it's all on video. I mean, you know, we had somebody there because I go, people are not going to believe this. People will not believe what God's doing in our day and age because we're limited to the, because the lies we hear. Well, they're over there. Nah, nah. You know what she said instantly? She goes, I feel better. I, I know. You've been weighted down by evil stuff. And she said, a minute later, she goes, I really feel better. I go, praise the Lord. Jesus set you free. They bounced off in their car. I mean, I took an offering up, but, you know. Do you see why it's important that people like us who have ministries in very rare places get supported by people like you? Because you may not be called to go over there and get shot at or have mortars fired at you. I stopped counting like over 40 mortars this past week. I, I, the thing that really bugged me out and really got next to me is ISIS is using little drones now. The quadcopters you can buy at the mall, they're using those with cameras affixed to watch your position and then drop mortars on you. And uh, I remember after the third one, and I'm running with all my gear, and, you know, it's, it's not our intention to engage ISIS directly. Y'all need to understand that. We're really just there to minister, reach, help. But, you know, when they're trying to kill you, right? And I, after the third time of running, trying to hide, you know, because they're following us and dropping I literally have, can I show you what, what, what they don't show in movies? Uh, we're like the real expendables. The old guys, that, that's our team. We're just a bunch of old guys, SF, I'm a former Marine. We, we got guys who've been with Delta, you know, we're, we're out there, we're like, and I tell you right now, after the third time of running, I, you know, diving behind my stuff, I was like, take my weapon, I'm like, Victor, you better get a hold of yourself, man. Yeah, I got to stretch. I literally start stretching out. I'm going, oh my gosh. Because I know I was running like this or something. Uh, 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 I'm going, what happened to your moves, man? I'm like, oh, where, oh my gosh. Where, I think I pulled something. True story. True story. When you hear the lie, I mean, when you hear the lie that you're weak, you got to combat it. You got to take that thought captive and boom. You all with me? When you hear I'm weak, you got to say, but the truth is he is strong. When you say I can't do it, you got to say, but I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. When the powers of darkness are too great, 
you got to say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. When you feel so lonely, when you feel so lonely, you got to be able to say, the Lord will never leave me or forsake me. When you go, I can't make it as a Christian, you got to realize he's saying, but I will complete the good work that I started in you. When you say, I'm afraid and fearful, you got to understand he's going, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. When you say, there's not enough power in me to destroy the works of darkness, you got to remember that he says, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. When you say, I'm not loved, you got to remember, he says, but I've not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And when you say, I feel like I'm crazy, you got to remember the word says, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. He is able when you are not. He is able when you can't. He is able when you're exhausted. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And the cross proves it. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, for anyone here that has believed lies over the truth, I pray, God, that your spirit would set them free right now. Lord, because it's truth that exposes the works of darkness and sets us free. Lord, I pray for anyone here first that actually doesn't know you. They really don't know you, Jesus, but they want to. They know there's got to be something more in life. There's got to be something better. There's got to be better value or purpose for their life. I pray that today, right now, by them sitting here, watching or listening, that they would absolutely say, I feel your spirit drawing me, God. I want to surrender to you. If that is you, I want to pray for you right now. Right now. If that's you, would you raise your hand so I can pray for you? Lift your hand and I'll pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You, 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 you. Who else? You. Praise the Lord. Raise your hand so I can say God bless you and you and you and you right here and you and all of y'all over there. There must be a big heathen section. Good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I see your hands. That's awesome. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. God bless you. Now, if you're here and you say, Victor, I know the Lord, but I've been believing lies, and I know my walk with him has been impeded by believing lies or even, you know, being involved in sin that I want to be set free. If that's you, let me pray for you right now. Lift your hand up and put it down. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. God bless you. Good. Right now, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. By the power of your spirit, thank you, Jesus, you're alive. Thank you, Jesus, you live. Thank you that you set us free so we can be free. I pray for those who've raised their hand to give their life to you, Christ, or to come back to you, or experience that level of freedom that, that they need. Dear Lord Jesus, set them free, forgive them of their sins, cleanse them. Lord, put your spirit in them. Put your spirit in them. Those who need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Lord, overflow them. Because I know that you have really ordained good works for them to do in their home, in their job, in their neighborhood, Lord, through this church, or even maybe even beyond the boundaries. So God, touch them, I pray. Heal them of their infirmities. Lord, let them know how much you love them. And we love you. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.